Hello, everybody. My name is Scatter. Welcome back to Divine Journey 2. You remember that yesterday we got the rainbow generator running for the first time and we got ourselves some rainbow blocks and uh, today, or rainbow stone, I think they're actually called, but who's counting? Um, today we're going to get into chapter 14. And if we look, there's a, a bunch of different uh, entry points to chapter 14. So these three on the left involve uh, divine RPG bosses. And uh, supposedly this one is the first one. So we'll go for that first. And then these other three are some things we can make. So um, the monolith stone in this mod pack uh, is actually craftable and it doesn't spawn the abyssal craft structures for the Shogoth layer and whatnot. Uh, and it says that's because they, you know, cause a bunch of havoc and destruction, which is really good. Um, not that they do that, but that they don't spawn. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get some crafting recipes for this stuff. We've also got black iron, which is going to, we're going to get our way into uh, 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 advanced uh, crafting, right? So we'll just teach the machine how to make dark stone right here and then throw the other two in the alloy smelter. Or wait, monolith stone also goes in the uh, crafter, but that one, black iron, goes in the alloy smelter and then... Monolith stone goes in the molecular assembler. Okay, so we can just make some of that. So they do craft in uh, sets of 32. So if we just take one, we'll get 32. So that's all good. And there's the quest for that. Now, I don't really know what this stuff is for. I mean, it's for abyssal craft, which for the record, I'm kind of worried about. Because <laughs> um, abyssal craft is a pretty crazy mod um, to really get into. But we need four monolith stone pillars. Increase the range your statues can transmit potential energy from. So the, the main thrust of Abyssal Craft is we get, like, statues and we have to, like, siphon power from them and do rituals and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, let's get a few black iron. I mean, we're going to need a lot eventually, so I don't really care how much we make right now. I'll go ahead and make half a stack and uh, the other thing the only other thing here is crystallized canola so this is kind of an interesting uh, process here so you take canola seeds you throw them in front of the atomic reconstructor for crystallized canola seeds you take that you throw it into refined canola oil to make crystallized oil and then you also can do crystallized canola seed with other canola seeds to get empowered canola seeds, and then you throw that in the crystallized oil to get empowered oil. So it's pretty, uh, it, it's a pretty intense, you know, uh, long kind of crafting operation, and I'm not really sure what the best way to automate it would be. Um, but for now, I will not automate it because I don't see the super need of it. But what I have been doing uh, just to prepare for it is I set up the squeezer with a bunch of canola and... We, the fractionating still is refining it into refined canola oil. So should be able to take that up, refined canola oil. So it does, I believe the atomic reconstructor has a pattern for the canola seeds. It does. So as long as we can grab some canola seeds, which I should just kind of import these into the ME system anyway. Probably set up a separate farming station for that. Uh, but for now, this is fine. And we can go ahead and make crystallized canola seed. Uh, so I just put in a bunch of stacks. So let's go ahead and make 256. That's fine. So then it has it still has a bunch of these left over. It should be making those unless... Is this not set up to... No, that picks up all, right? Okay, so that's working. These just happen to land like outside of the... Uh, range of it which is fine i mean it's not fine it is annoying and something that i'll have to fix but for now it's fine so there's your 256 of those and then those can be empowered but first first let's take the, yes okay so we throw that in there so it does get used up we get crystallized oil and now we can empower. I wonder, is there another way to make this stuff? Well, let's just make like 16 of these right now. Is there another way to make crystallized oil 
without throwing it into the world. Can I do it in a fluid transposer? It looks like no. Okay, so we're gonna have to do some integrated dynamic stuff, I think. Seems that way to me, but there's our empowered canola seed. And then with the empowered canola seed, we throw that into the crystallized oil and we get empowered oil. Okay, not 100% sure what that's gonna be used for right now. Um, oh, it wanted a bucket of the crystallized oil. Oh, shit. Well, I guess I can just get another one of those. There we go. Canola. Okay, 10 canola seeds is one of the most useless rewards we've seen so far. Now, okay, there we go. Empowered stuff. Empowered. Crafting. Yeah, oh, a triple battery. Nice. That's a pretty decent reward. So the, what this stuff is for... Who was that man with the shadowed face? Who was that sound? What was that sound from my neighbor's attic? Shellgoths aren't real, right? So all this stuff is a reference to uh, HP Lovecraft. Sorry, <laughs> did, I, did I completely butcher that name? HP Lovecraft, um, you know, Cthulhu and Shogoths and all that stuff. So this just, you empowered oil, infuse it with the rotten flesh to get Shogoth flesh. So the quest wants five. What kind of stuff is this used for? Okay, it looks like there's one used for making each statue. Cthulhu coin engraving, and then it's used for a couple different things in the Necronomicon. So we probably won't need... Well, actually, I don't know, because I don't know if you need multiple statues. You probably do, but I'll probably want to just bulk craft a bunch of this. So let me repeat that canola process a bunch of times. Something that's actually going to be pretty useful for this that uh, I haven't really touched on yet at all uh, is a reservoir from Thermal, which is basically just a bucket that can hold a lot more. And so I wonder how much we can upgrade this right off the bat with just stuff we happen to have laying around. So there's the hardened. Need an Invar gear, okay. Okay, so we should be able to take it all the way up to an Enderium reservoir now, which we may not use to the best of our ability for this uh, purpose, but that's okay. Because uh, it's still going to be really useful. So uh, this holds, what, 250 buckets. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty good. Um, so you can just take as much as we can there. we got 10 buckets. And then uh, is it, well, can I just, uh, there's, what is the button for that? When is, when is the button for this, actually? Um, reservoir, thermal, oh, no. What is this? I think cycle item mode from COFH what we're looking for here and uh i just put that on i don't want to really put it on a mouse button left click is what it was oh no it's just uh okay let's put that on t what am i using t for currently open chat oh yeah right of course um r i don't think r does anything when you're not in range overlay from building gadgets yeah that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. So yeah, so now I press that and on use empty, on use fill. So now I can put in the world if I put it back up to fill, then it's going to be like that. So I can pretty much just dig out a big area, fill it. And I said, well, what happens if I throw this in here now? Ah, that's weird, but pretty much what I expected. Okay, but that's fine. So I guess I should make another reservoir for the other stuff. That or just kind of make sure to use up all of the refined stuff first. Which does, to be honest, seem like a better plan. This is really, really glitchy. Okay, that's fine. I don't think this is really quite something that vanilla Minecraft does, so it's fine. Um, and then just suck up all this. And then, so that's, so that's the crystallized oil. And then we use that, or I guess I don't need to suck that up, right? Because I could just use that to be empowered, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I lost one. What the hell? Didn't I, did I not just lose one? So what happens if I, so then this is all there. I totally just lost one. Don't void all that, please. Okay, it's fine. Just take up all that. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll have to get used to the kind of inner workings of that, but... Um, yeah, I guess I'll just get a bunch of this. You know, just built a little fluid transposer here to use for this. Rotten flesh in. It's going to get filled up with powered oil very slowly, it looks like, but then we'll get Shogoth flesh out of that. Okay, so that's cool. Um, let's grab the black iron and see what we can do with that. So there's the stuff we already got. And extended crafting guide. Okay, interesting. We haven't had a book in a while. Uh, I have played with extended crafting before. Oh, this is a cool looking book. Singularities. Okay, I don't think we're going to be getting there for a while. Automation interface. This is something that I've had a lot of trouble with before in this mod. Um, I really, I didn't really get it to work right, but we'll get it set up right today. Um, but table crafting, I think, is what we're going to get into first. The basic crafting table is what we're going to want to be making very soon, right? And I'm going to automate all of these things because they are things that we're going to need a lot of, I believe. So let's go ahead at extended. And so the black iron frame is going to be the first thing. So ender casing, uh, ender casing. Ooh, that's uh, fine. That's not that bad. Um, it's annoying, but it's not that bad. So we're going to need that. And then hardened mithril glass, induction smelter. Okay, I don't have... I don't have an interface on an induction smelter right now, but I guess we'll have to get one, uh, which is fine. Or I can just do it this way. Honestly, this way might be better. I mean, I'm using a lot of extra resources that way. But are they resources I really care about? Hmm. Well, if I need a lot of that stuff, then maybe. Ender casing, though. Definitely want to teach you how to make that. And blocks of enderium. And I think you already know how to make... Iron casings, yeah, you do. Okay, so we'll load you up there. There and not you. There and there. Okay, cool, cool. So I'll make a bunch of that mithril glass just manually for now. So I think the only induction smelter that we were actually like using before is now being used for uh, iridium ore. So I, uh, I just went ahead and uh, made a new one. And, you know, I set it up here. It's pretty slow because it doesn't have any upgrades. One thing that I want to do very, very soon is basically just rip all of this out and uh, organize it a little better, uh, especially with regards to, like, automating stuff and uh, ME interfaces. Like, it's really all over the place right now. Um, and a lot of this stuff is kind of set up wrong, but it's just kind of been, you know, um, it's, it's basically the Minecraft equivalent of tech debt, right? Where, like, you know, I would set it up and be like, I'll fix it later, and then that just keep, kept building up. But, like, it made sense to do that while we didn't have automation, but now we do. So it's uh, something that we are going to definitely fix uh, very soon. But, uh, yeah, so I'll put in this first bit of mithril glass, and while I'm waiting for that to cook up, um, one thing that we need to build the boss summoning stuff from Divine RPG is a lot of these uh, shards from Divine RPG, and I don't really have that many of them right now. And I'm told these uh, enemies spawn a lot uh, down near Bedrock, so we're going to set up a mob farm down there, which shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I just need another mob crusher, and there's a lot of annoying stuff that goes into that, but that's okay. Um, one thing that is going to be really helpful is the fact that uh, Drop of Evil is really easy to make now, now that I have... The, oh, I guess I don't have any wither skulls because they're all being used to make nether stars, right? Hopefully I had not an even multiple of three. Oh, I did have a multiple of three. Okay, well, I'll have to go back to the uh, nether mob farm to grab those. Um, but I think I can just... Uh, well, yeah, I'll do that and I'll build the mob crusher and uh, we'll get it set up after I get back from doing all that. Just to show you how crazy this mechanism pump is, if anybody wasn't aware, like... It's gotten lava. Like, look at the radius of this thing. Like, here's here's the pump. Look at the radius of that thing. And it's not even gotten, like, you know. I, I thought it would, like, dig out kind of more evenly. Uh, I'm not sure why it hasn't. I guess it just doesn't work that way. But eventually it'll get all of it. And then fluid is insanely good. Like, this is, like, not even 10% of this drive is used up. And it has 46,000 buckets of lava. And there's about something similar to that in the actual stuff back home. So I'm uh, basically never going to need lava again. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty cool. 
All right, and here we are down at Bedrock. Now this is our Grains of Infinity farm, which we can just go ahead and leave running. Uh, the most annoying thing about this, I think, is going to have to be running power down here because uh, that's not something that we uh, needed before, but now we do. Uh, however, I do have our handy little destruction gadget here, and now if I shift right click, I should bring up the interface. That's so scary every time, although avoiding this stuff is not that bad. So the range of the thing is going to be 11 by 11. So we'll have that go 11, and we'll have it give it a depth of 11. And you can go up 3. Yes, that seems good. That seems good, that seems good. And I will offset it a little bit, just so I don't have to fuck with the rest of that stuff. So that should clear out exactly what we want. And let's just make a little door in and see. Perfect! Okay, so this is going to be the mob farm and I just need some dirt and uh, all that other stuff to really make it into one. Well I went ahead and decided that it was in fact too annoying to uh, run power all the way down here uh, so I decided I just wouldn't. So I will uh, just treat this like it's in a different dimension and just set up a power cell network so um, yeah we can just get that set up like anything else. You do power, and then you can output into your ME system, and then the chest can be, oops, the chest can be right there, sure, and then uh, you can be there, and then this will just work, right? All this will work, I think. I think this just works. Maybe it doesn't. One channel, device offline. Maybe this needs to be like connected with a cable and not just directly next to it. I guess that would make some semblance of sense. Now what is up with this? Why won't that work? Oh, cause well, okay, you don't have power. Sure, yeah, okay, that's fine. But then once you do have power, Okay, so I'll set up the power cell upstairs. So you link there. Okay, I'll set up the power cell upstairs. Link ID 3. Yes. Okay, cool. And okay, now you're powered up. So you're completely empty. You are completely empty. And we just need to start spawning some stuff in here. So I took away all the torches. You can start spreading. And then I'll have to close you up. And then you should be good. So we got some of these corrupted shards already, which is great. Uh, I'll probably have to set up a trash can or something. Not really sure how much I'll actually be uh, using this. But yeah, those corrupted shards are the main thing. So I don't know how much I'll actually have to like stay on top of this whole uh, situation. But yeah, Terran shards as well. I think all the Divine RPGs monsters uh, spawn down here. So I mean, they're pretty loud, but we're not going to be down here that much. So who cares? Um, yeah, okay. So... Uh, very cool. So by now our mithril glass is done and we can also go ahead and make our black iron frame. Just need an ender casing for that. And really, what are you... Oh, the, the empowered crystals. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose those are going to take a while. Um, you should go ahead and uh, do... Yeah, there you go. Everything's working. Good, good, good. That just, I don't think there's any way to speed up the empower. Like, if they have full power, then it's pretty much all you can do. Let's just make sure they do. It's looking good. It's looking good. Yep, they do have full power. So we're just going to have to wait on that. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. Ender casing. And there is the black iron frame. And we get some black iron back for that. And uh, so now we're ready to make the basic crafting table. So the only th thing we need for that is three double compressed crafting tables, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, the crafting tables are annoying to make, but with auto crafting, they're hard to bulk craft even because of the uh, the tools that don't stack. But with auto crafting, it's easy. So I'm going to load up the uh, crafting table. Actually, you know what? I'll just teach it how to make... Well, no, I'm not going to do that yet because I can't auto make the plates. So I'll go ahead and just make one for now. So it needs three of these black iron plates or slates as it calls them but same thing and it also what else is the uh the black iron slate is used for something else yeah the resident upgrades okay so we should be able to make the resident upgrade kits now so we can 
if we want, fully upgrade any uh, thermal machines, which is really good. They, those are some of the fastest machines uh, in the game, I believe. And um, that will be great for uh, auto crafting stuff. So that's really cool. And can you already auto craft crafting tables? You can't. So the double, actually you might, you might be able to. You can, okay. So the double compressed crafting tables, it's gonna take nine of each, so we need 81. 81 times two is 162 plus seven more. 162 plus seven is one, six, nine. And it's obviously made with pretty basic materials there. So there's 10. So there's our first one of those, and then the other ones should be coming in in not too long. Okay, at this point, we have everything we need to make the basic crafting table. It's funny that it's called that because it is so much harder to make than the actual, you know, quote-unquote basic crafting table, but it is what it is. So yeah, didn't I already have this? There you go, basic crafting table. Um, and I got some black iron back for that. So that's obviously used to make uh, the advanced crafting table, uh, which this one, the basic crafting table is, I don't know if there's anything you can only make with the basic crafting table in this mod pack. I know in some there are. Uh, it doesn't look like there are in this one. Uh, it's just gonna be a crafting ingredient, uh, but it's mainly gonna be used uh, to make for us right now, the advanced crafting table, which the advanced crafting table is a five by five crafting table. So it's, you know, there's a lot of creative stuff, uh, but our main thing is gonna be the energy pedestal from abyssal craft, um, or things from abyssal craft in general. I'm not sure uh, which one of those is gonna be the first thing we go for, but yes, advanced crafting table. So we need a block of luminescence. To get luminescence, we have to fill elevadium with energized glowstone, which is, not too hard to come by. Uh, well, hey, yeah, energized glowstone. I thought that was pyrothium for a second. That's just melting up glowstone, so that's super easy. Elevadium's pretty easy, so we can go ahead and make like a full stack of this um, luminescence, and then yeah, it's just that and some black iron. We do need two more basic crafting tables, but that's fine. And uh, I think at the, <laughs> I should probably teach the machine how to make uh, fluid transposers because we need a lot of those in general. Um, but there's our Shogoth flesh also. I'll just repurpose this one for now. There is the Shogoth flesh that we ordered a while ago. And I'm kind of worried that just like holding this is going to be detrimental or something. Uh, but it's probably fine. To move on in this quest line, we do need to fight uh, some of these divine RPG bosses. So we will just put that away for now. And uh, we'll get to work on the luminescence. Turns out you need a complete fuckload of glowstone in order to make uh, luminescence. Each item of it takes four buckets. So that means that uh, a whole stack of glowstone uh, will make you four luminescence uh, by my count because each glowstone gives you 250 buckets, 250 millibuckets, excuse me. And oh, this is incredibly slow too. I did go ahead and teach uh, the network how to make all these uh, upgrade kits and conversion kits. So the way it works is like the upgrade kit can take you from like one step to the next, but the conversion step just takes you straight there. So basically they're just like, you know, they combine them. They're just easier. So like once we get to the point where I can auto craft all these easily, I can just make resonant conversion kits for all the machines and just slap them all on without having to make like four different things and go bam, 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 bam. You know, it's just a convenience thing, just a quality of life thing. Uh, however, I will do this on here because this is just insanely slow. Now, it's not any slower than, it's it's like, you know, the even like it's still gonna be waiting for the glowstone to melt down. So it's really not that big of a deal to have that there. But I will go ahead and put a stack of glowstone blocks in there because those melt down into one bucket each. Let me just confirm that, yep. So let's uh, do that when that melts up. But I think uh, to finish up today's episode, though, uh, just to kind of dip our feet and everything in chapter 14, uh, we will go ahead and uh, fight the first Divine RPG boss, which I'm slightly nervous about. Um, I probably shouldn't be. It's probably fine. Uh, but I still am a little bit. So <laughs> um, I've been making a little bit more steaming Restonia over here because it takes a little bit of that. Hopefully we don't have to fight this boss too many times. Hopefully just once. I don't know. 
I mean, some bosses are like that. Some, like the Wither, you know, you need multiple things from. It's really hard to say before uh, we do it. But we need two of these. And then three regular clocks, which I don't think I have any in the system. And we should be able to make these right now. Yep, because of that mob farm. And here is the mysterious clock. So this just spawns the boss, right? It is almost dark right now, so I will wait until tomorrow. But uh, use to summon ancient entity in the overworld. Do not use this from an offhand. It could delete a different item from your inventory. Good. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and clear up my inventory a little bit. Uh, we will get our, uh, our gun, fly out somewhere safer, and uh, see what this boss is all about. Okay, we're here in the desert. I have a lot of bullets. I have a charged up jetpack. I feel good. I feel safe. Let's see what this boss is all about. Um, knowing Divine RPG, I'm just going to turn down the volume a little bit. Whoa! Uh, it's not loud, but it is pretty huge. Um, seems like kind of a pushover, unless there's going to be a phase two here. It has stopped taking damage. Not sure if that's like lag related or something. Oh. Hello. That must just be a, a rendering thing, I assume. It has once again stopped taking damage. Can I... Where can I hit you? I, I would assume I hit you in your big eye. You're not really doing too much boss-worthy things. You're just kind of walking around. Okay, you do kind of like... Push me around a little bit. Okay, it wants to be hidden like the crotch area, I guess. Not the big eye. I guess it makes sense. If you couldn't fly, it would be really annoying to hit that. Or head bullets. Okay, well. A little bit of a pushover as far as boss go. Uh, but we got an ancient leg. We got sand slash, which is a sword and not a Pokemon. And we got some divine shards. So I guess the legs are really what we were going for from this boss. And uh, stick them in a stone. So let's see. We're going to need two of those. We're going to need four Ayarako wings from that. And uh, what is what is the next boss here? Call of the Watcher used to summon the Watcher. And that we fight that one in the nether. So Eye of the Watcher, that's what we need for that. Ayarako wing. Oh, these are from, from the Horde Horn. So we need to fight all three of the bosses, um, which I probably could have guessed, but... Uh, we do need to fight all three of the bosses. Oh, there they are there. We need to fight all three of the bosses to move on here. Um, presumably, one kill is going to be fine on that. Some Osmeridium, very nice. Got the Rainbow Stone back. Okay, cool. Well, knowing how not hard that was, I'm not too worried about the other ones. Um, but I can't quite make this yet. I don't think I have any of these watching eyes on me. Probably not going to be too hard to farm them. Uh, but also this uh, Ender Alloy Advanced... I'm not making it. Um, probably not going to be too bad to auto-craft this up, though. Let's go set that up. All right, so basically that just involved a lot of patterns for the alloy smelter. So it's just kind of all this stuff. It's all those different kinds of alloys. This pattern card thing is completely magical, man. I love that this is a thing now. Like, before, I don't know how I lived... Without it, I feel like I just, like, disabled channels for the first time. I'm like, man, it's so nice not to have to worry about it. Like, obviously, you know, it's just four times the amount. It's going to run out eventually, but for now, I'm uh, living the life. So I need two of these advanced Ender Alloy. Why is all this coming up for advanced Ender Alloy? So advanced. Do I have the stuff to make this? No, I'm missing the industrial leather, which is the stupidest thing to be missing. Um... Is this really even automatable? Like, it's an arc furnace thing. Chemical injection chamber, I guess, is how you automate it. But this is so annoying to have to make, man. Oh, you need that stuff for it anyway. Okay, well, I think you technically can automate the arc furnace anyway, but it's more annoying. Do I have any treated leather? Okay, I do, thankfully. All right, I'll get on this industrial leather thing. Okay, so I have another eight of those. This, I really don't know how I'm going to automate this if I need buffalo, hide, and imp hide. Like, can you breed imps? I guess maybe I'm going to have to just do that. I don't know. 
I don't know, man. Not going to worry about it for right now. Ender alloy advanced. Now this this is going to use the uh, alloy smelter for a bunch of different things. So it'll probably take a little bit, but it'll also be cool to watch. So it's making all those, and then it's making all those. Um, yeah, good stuff. Okay, not as cool as I thought maybe, but auto crafting is just cool in general, I think. How much luminescence do we have by now? We have nine. As a reminder, we need... Uh, and we only need one, actually, so as soon as we get our other uh, basic crafting tables, then that should be good. I'll leave those in there just to make some more, because we're going to need some in the future for sure. But we may be able to get the uh, advanced crafting table before the day is out here as well. Um, so the basic crafting table. Black iron frame is something that I taught it how to auto-craft. What do we not have for that? Enderium. And di oh no, we're out of diamonds. Okay, well we have a bunch. I just need to actually get them made. Diamond ore. That's that's a scary proposition to be out of diamonds right now. Like, that's the one thing I haven't checked on my deep dark miner in a very long time either. But I should have a, a lot more from that. So let's see. I don't know if those are going to be auto output for something. Yeah, of course they are. But that's okay. We're more going to roll in and then it won't be anything to worry about. Let's actually just go check on this quickly. So it looks like it is completely done here. Um, 716 diamond ore is a little bit less than I would have expected, but um, I guess it just works out that way sometimes. So let's set this up again for... 1024, just move it over another 512. And then you can just go ahead and keep doing your thing. And let's uh, get this into the system. All right, it's getting to the point where I am worried a little bit about dumping a 256K storage cell into the system. I shouldn't be though, we still have more than four empty 64Ks, which means I definitely will be able to fit them in, which is good. Um. Yeah, so we should have the diamonds now to make that. Let's go ahead and teach the system how to make Enderium as well, because that is a pretty big thing that it would be missing. So Enderium in the alloy smelter, Enderium base in sand, Enderium base is going to be all of this stuff and none of that should have to be auto-crafted. Platinum we may have to get set up in the future, but I should have a decent enough backlog. Look, this is full already. I'm going to have to get another pattern card in there. Okay, but that's good. And then black iron frame, we need two. And now this should be good. Indeed it is. Um, yeah, so I'll wait for that to build up. We'll get the next advanced crafting table. And I know we're over a half hour now. Uh, so we will save the other two boss fights for tomorrow. And uh, just get the advanced crafting table built for today. And uh, that'll be it. There is one more thing I wanted to teach the system to make because it is pretty pertinent. Uh, and that is Fluxed Electrum. It is going to be necessary for uh, the upgrade kits, uh, which is super important. And the uh, Z-Logic Control, I guess I'm going to have to find a way to automate this machine as well. Um, I don't know. These take durability damage, right? Wait, I haven't even thought about this since I set this up. Do they take durability damage? Looks like they do. What am I going to do about the shears? Because the shears, I can make an unbreakable one of these, but the shears, I don't know. Um, maybe I can just make... I mean, I guess I don't have to worry about it. That's like over a thousand crafts. It's probably fine just to replace as need be because not too many things use this machine, but I guess I'll have to get that automated too. And I, it probably just works fine with an interface, but it has to be like set up in a certain way. Oh, I don't know. It's probably fine. Ender IO machines are usually pretty smart about stuff like that. So I don't think that I need to worry about it too much. But yeah, Fluxed Electrum is something we've actually avoided making till now, but it's actually not that bad to make. Just a couple, uh, couple of alloys together. And I believe all of these, the system either knows how to make or is just making constantly anyway. So it's fine. Need another pattern card. And there we go. And there we go. So now Fluxed Electrum is something that we can make. Not sure if there's going to be any like quests for that or anything. Uh, let's make a few right now. 
Okay, well, so there's that. Cool. So no quests or anything, but I mean, this is a generally kind of useful thing. Um, I know this fluxed armor plating is used for some stuff too. Uh, we could have made the other jet plate, but we went with the dark steel one and then the infusion matrix. You need it to make the uh, cryo stabilized flux duct. And then there's a few uh, augments that uh, that use it as well. And then the plate, of course, is used for this cool stuff. Okay, so that I think, as soon as we get the, so we got the three basic crafting tables. No, we don't. Are you still crafting something? Wait. No, two. Okay. Two basic crafting tables. Yes. Okay. So as soon as those get uh, crafted up, we will get our luminescence block and then black iron slates and put them there. And we'll just wait for this crafting job to finish up. It is kind of cool just to click this button up here and just watch the crafting, especially crafts like this that just have like, you know, a bunch of different steps to them. I don't know if there's any way to like speed this up, like to make these run in more like parallel than they currently are. I really don't know. Cause like we do have the, maybe if I, oh, I, proc I, okay. If I made two separate patterns, no, but the patterns in the interface and the interface is touching four different assemblers. If it's not smart enough to put it out to multiple, maybe if we did have multiple patterns into like different interfaces, it would run them in parallel. But I know that's what the co-processing units are kind of for as well. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I think for now, you know, waiting two minutes for something like this that I'm going to need like one of ever is I accidentally canceled it. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. I can just run it again. Um, and it would have saved all the stuff it already made. Um, yeah, I mean, like, for now, having something like this where I'm crafting something that I'm going to need, like, one of for now, and, like, very few of, at least, it's fine. If in the future we need, like, a bunch of items for something that we're going to be crafting all the time, I'll have to figure out how to kind of parallelize it a little bit more. But for now, I think it's fine. Let's just wait this out. All right, we're just on the tail end of this auto craft now. And there we go. So basic crafting table, there's our three, and there's our advanced crafting table. Extremely cool. Don't like where this is going. Me either, but that's okay. Get some elevadium back, that's fine. Um, so now, I guess we use this to turn that into something else, and then we can get into the rest of all the abyssal craft craziness. Uh, that'll all be next time, but for now, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.